Lately, I've been seeing a lot of TikToks and other videos about pathological demand avoidance, which if I'm being honest, I hadn't heard of before. So let's get into it. What is pathological demand avoidance? What are five common misconceptions? And what can we do about it? Pathological demand avoidance, or PDA, is a term used to describe a pattern of behavior often found in people with autism, although it can affect a variety of people. It has also been called pervasive drive for autonomy, and it is characterized by someone's strong reaction to any perceived demand. This goes way beyond someone not wanting to do something that's asked of them. This has to do with us feeling like our autonomy is being threatened. And when we feel threatened, we're pushed into our stress response or fight, flight, freeze. And this can affect our ability to do any and everything we need to do in our life. Now that we know what PDA is, let's get into those five misconceptions. Misconception one, that we are just being stubborn. The important thing to know about PDA is that it's not even about the thing we're being asked to do. In fact, we might have already started doing it. Hey, can you do the dishes for me? Nope, not anymore. No, 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 don't stop. I didn't know that you were already doing them. It's too late. You ruined it. I'm, I'm not doing them anymore. You're so defiant. Every time I tell you to do something, you freak out. PDA autism often looks like defiance from the outside perspective, but it's actually a persistent drive for autonomy, like me feeling like I need to be in control of my own body. What does that mean? Basically, we feel like we need to be in control of our bodies, and when something threatens our autonomy, it causes us to go into a fight or flight response, and it might look like defiance from an outside perspective, but it's an uncontrollable like body instinct. So me demanding you to do the dishes disrupted your nervous system and caused this like defiant behavior? Yeah, it has nothing to do about the chore. Like, as you can tell, I was doing the dishes. I have no problem doing them. It's more so my brain thinking that you're taking choices away from me and it's reacting. It dysregulates our nervous system and we go into fight, flight, freeze, which means our limbic system, which houses our amygdala, takes over and our prefrontal cortex goes offline. We think we're being threatened. It's not that your request was mean or threatening, but that's how it feels, which makes it feel impossible, not to mention super uncomfortable, to do or even keep doing the task. And the reason we get pushed into our stress response is because the ask, like for example, hey, could you unload the dishwasher? Threatens our autonomy. We can feel like we don't have any choice but to do the thing that you requested. And that in and of itself feels terrible. It feels like we're losing ourselves and the only way to get ourselves back is to push back and not do what you're asking. Another important thing to consider is that because this occurs more often in those of us with autism spectrum disorder or ASD, we have to talk briefly about the fact that ASD makes regulating our nervous system that much more difficult. It can also cause us to get dysregulated with more frequency. If you don't have ASD, you might be thinking, well, just shake it off, do what they ask. But it's not that simple. When we have ASD, our brain, it just works differently. And studies even show that our prefrontal cortex, amygdala, and limbic system are the parts of the brain most affected by ASD. So of course, we can be dysregulated and pushed into our stress response more easily than others. When we have ASD, we can also be very rigid in the way that we think and in what behaviors we will do. And when someone pops in and tells us to do something else, it can feel like it comes out of nowhere and pull us out of our groove, which is why PDA often can look like defiance or selfishness when in reality, it has more to do with the way that our brain works. Misconception two, that we only struggle to do things other people ask of us. To be honest, this is actually what I thought when I first started looking into PDA, but I quickly learned that this can even affect our ability to go to the bathroom when we need to. You must do this. No. Oh, good, you're here for it. I was going to tell you to do that. Keep it up. It's the best TV show ever. You have to watch it. Like, you must. Oh, right, yeah. Oh, 
Just as some advice, I think it would be better if you did it this way. No, it's okay, I can do it. Well, it would actually work better if you did it this way, so I'll tell you how to do it. I'm just not gonna bother. Each day we have things we need or have to do. Like this morning, I needed to get up for a call that I had at nine and I really should brush my teeth, feed myself. And the list kind of goes on and on and on. But when we have PDA, each one of those things can feel like a threat to our autonomy. We feel like we don't have a choice and the mere thought of having to do it is dysregulating. I know this may be hard to understand, but think of it this way. We all know that we can't live without air, right? Therefore, we don't really have a choice as to whether or not we breathe. I mean, sure, we can choose to not do deep breathing or short rapid breaths, but it has to happen whether we want it to or not. Our innate need to breathe isn't something that we get to decide to do or not do. And that lack of choice, even though it keeps us alive, is triggering to someone with PDA. It's not the thing itself. It's the lack of ability to choose. It's also important to consider some of the other symptoms those of us with autism spectrum disorder may have. Things like our strict adherence to routines and resistance to change. Meaning that we are most comfortable and regulated when we get to do the things we want to do in the order that we like to do them. While those of us who don't have PDA might think, well, sure, I, I don't like having to do all of these things to take care of myself either, but I just push through and I do it. No big deal. To someone with PDA, it's a break in the routine or preferred way of doing things. And that change is hard to move through, meaning we can put off showering, feeding ourselves, or even going to the bathroom because it'll pull us away from what we're already doing. Misconception three, that PDA is a choice. And if we just wanted to help out more, we would. This one is important to cover because a lot of the comments on some TikToks about PDA said things like, ah, come on now, these excuses are getting out of hand. And it is defiance though, like a complete rejection of authority is happening. And the truth is, it can look like an excuse or like defiance. But we have to remember that it doesn't feel good to the person dealing with it. In fact, there is a great TikTok creator who educates about her experience with PDA, and I think this kind of sums it up. Hey, what's up? You never texted me back. Sorry, I was planning on it, but then so much time had passed that it started to build up like a demand, and then I felt like I just couldn't answer you, and then too much time had passed, so I got so anxious about it that I just had to like delete the text. Okay, so it's been two days. I really need to shower tonight. Tonight, I will take a shower. I will shower tonight. I have to. Uh, nope, nope, not going to do that anymore. Another important key here is the fact that we can also have difficulties with regulating our nervous system. Meaning that while someone else can feel a bit upset at an uncomfortable or inconvenient ask and push through it, do it anyways. Those of us with PDA can't. We don't have control over that. And our body and brain are going to react the way that they react. This can cause us to be impulsive easily affected, and to many, appear highly sensitive. Compound that with the fact that many of us with PDA also aren't good at hiding how we feel and often aren't concerned with fitting in. So that reaction is gonna show either in actions that we take or even by our facial expressions. Don't worry, we can find ways to work with instead of against our brains and I'll get to that in just a minute. Misconception four that people with PDA are just lazy. When I saw this misconception in the comments, I immediately thought of that post I saw a few months back that said, if you were being lazy, you'd be having fun. Now that spoke to me because I often think, I'm just being lazy, when in reality, I'm in need of a break or maybe I'm having a tough emotional day and I'm not a robot, you know? But really the truth is, when we have PDA, we prefer self-directed behavior, meaning that we have no issue doing things when we feel internally motivated to do it. The problem is that we aren't always motivated to do the things we need to do each day. 
especially the mundane ones. And while neurotypical people might feel the urge to do something because it's what everybody else is doing, those of us with autism and PDA, we don't feel that pull. We can not really care if we fit in or not, or at least that's not enough of a motivator to get us to do the things we don't really want to do. Another important thing to think about is the fact that when we have ASD, we can struggle to pick up on much of the nonverbal communications from those around us, which, like I mentioned earlier, can mean that sometimes these requests for us to do something can feel like they come out of nowhere. We don't feel prepared and therefore we're agitated by them. The best way I can describe this to someone who doesn't have ASD or PDA is to have you imagine that you're working on an important presentation with your coworker, Jordan. He's been under a lot of stress lately due to tight deadlines and intense workload, but you aren't aware of any of this. During a team meeting, you ask him to help out with an extra portion of the presentation and he flips out, gets really upset, leaves the conference room, stating that you don't appreciate his efforts. He doesn't wanna work with you anymore. That request seemed reasonable, but we didn't know what was going on with Jordan. And that's what made the ask seem unreasonable to him. Misconception five, that it only occurs in people with autism spectrum disorder. Throughout this video, I've mentioned a lot about PDA and its connection to autism because it is most often seen as a symptom of it, but it doesn't exclusively happen in ASD. In fact, pathological demand avoidance can occur in anyone with sensory processing challenges. It is also linked to people with difficulties with nervous system regulation. When I was looking for research, much of it was focused on children. I know ASD has that problem. But based on what I read about PDA, I think it's safe to say that we could see it in those of us with ADHD because of our executive functioning issues and propensity for sensory overload, as well as those with sensory processing disorder itself. Remember, PDA occurs because we don't feel like we have a choice and our autonomy is being threatened. This dysregulates our nervous system and we can't calm it easily which also makes me think that we could see PDA in those of us with generalized anxiety disorder, PTSD, or even borderline personality disorder. Therefore, it's safe to say that PDA does not exclusively happen to those of us with autism. Because pathological demand avoidance can affect so many of us, let's briefly get into the ways that we can better deal with it. And these will cover both the things we can do if we have PDA ourselves and what to do if someone in our life has it. Starting with using reverse psychology, kind of. Since PDA happens because we don't feel like we have a choice and we have to do something, you can tell yourself not to do the thing that you should really be doing, like don't you dare brush your teeth, or I don't want you to make yourself dinner. That would be ridiculous, you're better than that. Don't you dare make dinner. By making the demand the thing that we aren't supposed to do, at least in our head, we can sometimes motivate ourselves to do it. The way that this helps us if our partner or child has PDA is we can say something like, I bet you can't do that. Or whatever you do, do not help me with the groceries. For example, you can also challenge them. Like, I don't think you know how to make chicken pot pie. Or, I bet you can't finish folding your laundry before this episode of The Office is over. Those are kind of rewarding, plus there's a time crunch, which can help motivate without feeling like it's an actual demand because they get to decide if they wanna take on the challenge. Another tip is to do things before they get to the place where they're a demand. For example, if I clean up the kitchen tonight when there's no pressure to do it, then it won't stop me from making my breakfast in the morning. If we preemptively strike, we can sometimes stop it from becoming an actual need or a forceful demand. We could also do small things kind of little by little so that it doesn't feel so intense or as big of a demand. And this prevents our nervous system from getting so dysregulated and will allow us to keep doing the things we need to do without feeling that level of pressure. Something else I saw online is that 
many people do some sort of like role playing. And no, I'm not talking like a sexy kind of role playing, more like you imagine that you are a character in one of your favorite video games, books, or you completely make up a new character. Having PDA is a real struggle because it is not a conscious decision that we make, that we have to do something, therefore we don't do it. Or someone tells us to do something, therefore we're absolutely not doing it, even if we were gonna do it before they told us to do it. So something that we can do is inhabit a different character, a different world. PDA lives in the fantasy, because that is easier for us to show up to than life, because life is a real source of anxiety from our history, et cetera, et cetera. So what we can do is inhabit a character. So I'm not doing it. I'm stepping into this fantasy of this person who lives this particular life, who does it in this way. And that can be a way to trick our minds, to find the joy, to find the fun in carrying out a task and not having to do it as ourselves in this scary neurotypical world. If your child has PDA, you could encourage them to dress up like this character and have them tell you all about them, what they do, what they're good at, etc. If it's you, I mean, you can also dress up, do what you want, but I also encourage you to really play it out in your head. What is this character like? Is their hair purple, green, brown, blonde? Do they live with fairies in the woods, in a high-rise building in New York City? Are they a mythical creature? Get creative and imagine you're someone else because that can take you out of your own reluctance and actually allow you to do the things you need to because the demand's not placed on you. The next thing we can do is give choices that give us the same result. That way they can choose the way that they would like to do something and that gives them some of their autonomy back and prevents a nervous system overload. Now we can do this for ourselves too, by considering if we would rather drink the water in our water bottle or go get a bubbly water from the fridge, for example. If the goal is to stay hydrated, either choice will get us there. Or it could be something like, would I rather get out of the car now or when the song is over? It feels way better to our brain and bodies when we get to decide what we wanna do. Another trick is to break down big tasks into smaller ones. Like instead of saying that I'm going to make dinner, we can say, hell no, I'm not gonna make dinner, but I am gonna look up what I wanna make, or I'm just gonna cut up part of this onion. Doing these other smaller tasks not only seems less overwhelming, but they also allow us to do something because we choose to do it like we're tricking our brain into doing it. And finally, we can just say, you know what? I'm not gonna do anything today, nada. I'm just gonna sit here and do nothing. Because guess what? Doing nothing will kind of start to feel like a demand and you will find yourself doing the things that you need to. And I know that may sound similar kind of to the reverse psychology thing at the beginning, but I feel like it's a bit different and sneakier. So I wanted to make sure I gave it the space to be explained. But I would love to hear from you. Do you struggle with pathological demand avoidance? Do you know someone who does? What tips or tricks help you better manage it? Let us know in those comments below because I think this is way more common than we realize. Thanks for watching, have a wonderful week, and I will see you next time.